God, reach out to that one, oh God, that is trusting and holding on to the promise of your word. The Lord, you would deliver many, oh God. You would heal many in our midst, oh God. Those that have voiced their concerns and those that have not voiced, oh God. And every one of us, oh God, that represents our relatives, our brothers and our sisters that are not even here who are unwell, O oh God, we come in faith believing that God, you are our healer, O oh God. And thank you that you are in this place, O oh God. Thank you that you are in the house, O oh God, to do miracles, to perform wonders and miracles in our midst, O oh God. And so, Lord, we thank you for the season of revival, O oh God. I pray that every one of us will hear that sound of revival, that every dry bone will be revived, Every dead bones will be revived, O oh God, that you will renew us and strengthen us, O oh God. And I pray that even as you begin with others, O oh God, begin with Buruburu, O oh God. Remember each person, O oh God, that is standing to you in the heat of prayer, asking for your divine healing and intervention this morning. So we thank you that, God, you have loved us. You have made it possible for us to see today. Every person that is attending this service and the other services in the meeting today, Lord, we give you praise and we honor you for your grace and for your mercy. You have been good and we thank you. We lift you up that you love us and you care for us. In Jesus' name. Lord, we stand with you. We stand with the family of Dismas Better and his wife who are both sick. We pray, Lord, as we have continued to seek before you, O oh God, that you may reach out to this family. We commend to you this mass and his wife, O oh God. Father, you see even what the diagnosis cannot see. You see even what the doctors cannot see, O oh God. That even as they seek intervention with the hospitals, O oh God, Lord, we are asking for a miraculous intervention, O oh God. Do it for your glory, O oh God, that a testimony will go, that you are a healer and you are able to restore, O oh God. And Lord, we pray for every logistical need that they have, even for the wife that has been operated, O oh God, and is unable to be discharged because of finances, O oh God, that you would provide and come through, that she would be able to be discharged from hospital, O oh God. We ask for a financial breakthrough, not just for them, but anyone else, O oh God, who has come here asking, O oh God, for an intervention in their finances, O oh God. We pray, Lord, that you would, O oh God, release, O oh God, every blockage in the lives of your people, O oh God. Every one of us, O oh God, that is seeking an intervention in our careers, O oh God, in our businesses, O oh God, in our jobs, O oh God. Father, intervene, O oh God, because you are faithful to do it, O oh God. We pray also for Priska Mwagangi of S4SG, whose father is admitted at Kijabe Mission Hospital. Father, Lord, you are able to see this. And we stand with our sister who makes this request asking us to stand in faith believing together that you are able to heal this father oh god father we send a word even as your word says that we do not have to be there but send a word oh god even to kijabe mission hospital that this father would arise oh god and testify of your healing and of your grace so we pray for a restoration oh god and for many others oh god that are suffering oh god in sickness at their homes, in their hospital beds, oh God, even those others who are here carrying medication, oh God, of various kinds. Lord, remember us as you move in this service today. We pray for healing. We pray for your restoration in Jesus' name. In this season in our nation, oh God, even as we go to uh, the elections in a few days, oh God, as the countdown begins, oh God, even in the next few days or few hours, oh God, as the deputy uh, running mates are named, oh God, we pray for peace in our nation, oh God. Father, there are those that have prophesied, there are those that have made uh, a, a test statements, oh God, that call for violence and other things that destabilize our nation. We prophesy peace in our nation. We prophesy deliverance in our nation. We prophesy a peaceful election, oh God. You know, only you know, oh God, who is going to be the president, oh God. And he will be a ruler, oh God. You are able to use 
anything and anybody, oh God. Father, so we pray that you would subject, oh God, the leadership of our nation before you, oh God, that our nation will be at peace, oh God. So we pray for the presidential elections, oh God, the gubernatorial elections, oh God, senatorial, the MPs, the MCAs, the women rep, oh God, every position that is coming for elections, oh God, we surrender these matters before you. Lord, go before us, oh God. We pray that you will take control of this season, oh God. That the voice that we hear is a voice of freedom, is a voice of peace, is a voice of reconciliation, is a voice of hope, and not a voice of despair. In Jesus' name, we put our trust in you, oh God. Remember each one, oh God, that is vying, oh God, that they will be subject to your control and subject to your power. So we rise against every demonic powers that are being fashioned, oh God. Every form of violence, we rise against it. We condemn the powers of darkness in this season, oh God. And we pray, Lord, take control. Take control, oh God, arise. Arise in our nation and let your enemies be scattered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. A mighty and better hand clap to the King of Kings. Your hands above your head, a better one. To the Lord of Lords, the one who reigns forever. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Even as you take your seats, we, we thank the Lord. You can help me to appreciate our, our deacon. And also appreciate the, the worship team to be used of the Lord that we may be in the presence of the Lord through worship. And we thank the Lord. We welcome those who are joining us. And we bless the name of the Lord to be in this place quite beautiful and a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God is good. And all the times. Amen. We, we are blessed because goodness is his nature. At this particular time, let me take this opportunity on behalf of uh, the Sitamburuburu leadership just to welcome all of you to this uh, service. And um, we also welcome those who are joining us for the first time. So if you are here and you are not a member of Sitam Buru Buru, but today the Lord has occasioned that you may worship together with us, we would want to acknowledge your presence. Are you there? You may just wave from where you are seated. If you are, you are joining us, you are our visitor. Amen. Just appreciate them. Can you be upstanding? Can you be upstanding that I may get to see you, our visitors? We would want to acknowledge that you are here. I've heard of the clubs, but I've not seen. Is someone? Oh, oh. Covered by the camera team. Oh, we are pre Oh, I can see our sisters there. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Actually, we, uh, we are happy that you are here and we are quite intentional to, to receive you. This is um, Sitam Buru Buru, where Christ Jesus is the answer. So continue feeling at the feet of Christ. Um, to our visitors, uh, perchance you are just visiting us, but you will be moving to your uh, local church thereafter. Please take our love and greetings. But if you have been looking for a place of worship that you can belong to, the church has got a good news to tell you. Church, what do we tell our visitors? Amen. That your search for a church has come to an end as you consider Sitam Buruburu to be your home church and a place of worship. Now to our visitors, all our visitors, even those who will be going and those who contemplate to join us please at the end of this service we would just want to have a fellowship with you we have a room uh, painted in maroon and, and and black to my right at the end of this service um please find your way there you can be guided by our officials in um, 
in red and blue jackets at the end of the service. Just find your way there so that we can fellowship as you get to know us better and as we also find to know you better. So we, we thank the Lord. At this particular time and moment, I will just give the sound team to roll out the announcements. A very good morning to you and welcome to today's service. My name is Waheto Wamoyo and here is today's bulletin. All parents who have Form 4 ex-candidates are invited for a consultative meeting today, the 15th, after the second service in the Youth Hall. Mensa Me 2022, a program for all those who start their KCSE in March and April 2022, begins on Tuesday, the 17th of May at 8.30 a.m. The program will run every Tuesday and Thursday for a period of two months and culminate with a camp. All ex-candidates are welcome to this live transformative program. In the months of May and June, SITAM will be using a Bible study material entitled The Role of the Church in Politics. Kindly get yourself a copy at 150 shillings at the Huduma desk immediately after the service. This month of May, we are going all out. All ladies 18 and above, this is the ultimate outdoor plot for you. The Women Ministry presents Walk on the Trail at Ololua Nature Trail. Mark the date, Saturday the 21st May. Meeting point is right here at Sitamburuburu at 7.30 a.m. The buses leave at exactly 8 a.m. Our theme is self-care. Come expecting great fun, great fellowship, serene nature, and awesome team building activities. Charges are 600 Kenya shillings per person. So kindly register with your group leader or at the Huduma desk. I know you can't wait. See you there. All those who got baptized in the month of April to collect their baptism cards at the Huduma desk immediately after the service. Are you gifted in music? Can you play an instrument and are passionate about serving God as a band member? Sitam Buruburu Music Team and Worship Ministry is conducting band auditions on Saturday the 28th of May at the Youth Hall from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Kindly register at the Huduma desk after the service or contact 0723-596-328 or 0791-689-871. Ladies and, well, just the ladies. We invite you to the P31 Yamachowa Hangout happening on the 11th of June. The venue is Chemi Chemi and registration is 200 shillings only. You can make your payment through the Mpesa pay bill number 933945, account name use P31. The dress code will be baby pink tops and blue jeans. Speaking to us is our very own senior pastor, Reverend Jesse Mwai. All ladies aged 18 to 25 are welcome. And remember, Usichome Maisha, Choma Nyama. The Men of Action invites all men for the monthly men's fellowship on Saturday, the 21st of May, starting at 7 a.m. in the main sanctuary. The theme of the meeting will be an authentic man radiating God's glory. And the speaker will be Elder Musio Kimuli. Come and be inspired to radiate God's glory as an authentic man. That's it from the media desk. My name is Waheto Wamoyo. And even as you go into the week, remember that you are loved. 
Have a beautiful day and an amazing weekend. Johi, their wedding will be on Saturday, the 28th of May at 11 a.m. here at Sitam Buruburu. If anyone has any just reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, let them uh, see the, come to church office before the wedding day or forever hold your peace. And so we, we, we bless the name of the Lord. Um, hallelujah. It is a time to give. It is a time to be blessed. Amen. It is a time to give. It is a time of our blessings. Do we mean it that when we give in the house of the Lord, it is a privilege? So we, we just want to, uh, to pray because we know that um, giving is, is part of worship. Even as our ushers come to wait on us, giving is part of worship. Amen. And so even as we give, we can use many options of giving through M-Pesa as uh, the details are being displayed on the screen. We can give um, in cash, we can put our offertory in the, uh, the baskets, offertory baskets. We can also swipe our, our cards uh, through the assistance of our officials in red jackets. And for them that are writing the check, please address to Christ is the answer ministries. So we pray as we give. Father, we, we bless your name because of this privilege. Jehovah, you have blessed us. We, we are blessed. We thank you because of the resources that you have endowed on us. The ones that we have and the ones we are yet to possess. So dear fathers, we give a portion of that which you have given unto us in offering and in tithe. Jehovah, we pray that your blessings shall be our portion. Bless the works of the hands of your people. We thank you because of the expansion of your kingdom and service in ministry through wise administration. Be uplifted and be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you are free, even as we get from the music team. you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus You deserve the praise, 
worthy is the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. At this particular moment, help me to welcome our, our senior pastor, Rev. Jesse Mwai, who will take us to the next level. Amen. Good morning. I trust that you are well. And uh, what a joy it always is for us to be gathered in the house of the Lord. In a short while, we'll be going to the ministry of the word. But before we do so, just to put emphasis on, the, on our ex-cans program, we know that we have our young people who just finished the exams and what of you. And we want to keep them busy but not just keeping them busy for the sake of keeping them busy, but just be able to impact them. So we want to ask all the parents, if you have some ex-candidates in your house, uh, to please send them on Tuesday, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But uh, it, we also want to involve all the parents. So this afternoon, right after the second service, right after the second service at 1.30 p.m., in the youth hall, there will be a consultative meeting for all the parents, all the parents of ex-candidates. So if you have an ex-candidate, please, uh, we want to ask that you consider just coming for that meeting, just for us to be able to discuss just a few things as we launch the program this coming Tuesday. Uh, we also want to bring to our attention that our finance and administration uh, officer, our sister Pauline. Pauline, if you would just come. Pauline has, uh, of course, many of us, I think all of us know our sister Pauline, and she's been a blessing to this ministry. She has transitioned to Sitam Woodley. And uh, we want to just wish her God's best, and to replace her here at Sitam Buruburu is uh, Dennis Obiero. Dennis comes to us from Sitam Eldoret. Although originally, before he went to Sitam Eldoret, we used to be with him back in Sitam Gong. And uh, what a joy it is to be able to receive him to just come and be part of the team here at uh, Sitam Buruburu. Um, we want to appreciate Pauline for the many, many years. I think before she, she, she became our finance uh, an administration officer at the church here in Sitam Buruburu. She was at the secondary school. All right, so when I came in 2019, then she came and, be, be, you know, was part of us. And uh, here in Sitam Buruburu, especially as a staff, we are, we are, we are like a family. So for, for us, it's quite, uh, it's not easy for us to let her go. But of course, we know that uh, these transitions are inevi inevitable. And we want to wish her God's blessing and God's be best as she transitions to Sitam Woodley and that uh, she will also have an impact at Sitam Woodley. Does anybody know Pauline? You look like I'm talking about a stranger. You know Pauline? So we just want to pray for her. Uh, but maybe, I know you've never heard her voice on the pulpit. Maybe she wants to say, uh, maybe she wants to speak for herself. I think it would be a good idea uh, so, Pauline, would you just want to say one or two things? Good morning, church. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you for the, for the time that I've been here. I've enjoyed myself just to serve in the midst of God's people. And even as I transition to Woodley, I know it's uh, just, Woodley's not far, it's just um, 20 minutes away. But it's good to be to know that I'm living a good place and I'm also going to a good place. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. And thank you for each and every one of you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Let's just pray for Pauline and also as we receive Dennis, let's just pray for them. Father, we thank you so much for Pauline, dear Lord, who has so blessed us here at Sitam Buruburu, served us, Lord, so tirelessly, King of Glory and helped us, dear Father, especially to run the administrative aspect of this ministry. We pray for her, Lord, as she transitions to Sita Moodley. We pray that she will be a blessing to the congregation there, to the campus at Sita Moodley in the name of Jesus. We pray may you bless her, may you increase her, may you 
bless her family, Jehovah, her children, her, her husband, King of Glory, because of the blessing that she has been to us, dear Father, would you bless them too as a family? So Lord, we release her with your blessing to Sitam Woodley. Go with her, go before her, grant her favor in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And Lord, even as we also receive our brother Dennis, we welcome him, dear Father, with open arms. And we pray that he will settle quickly. We pray that he too shall also be a blessing, dear Father, here at Sitam Buruburu. And that Father, even as he also transitions together with his family from uh, Eldoret, be with them, Father. And uh, we pray that uh, he will be able to connect with us, Lord, and he will experience the warmth of this congregation and of, of this campus to the glory and honor of your name. So we thank you, we honor you, for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen, Amen. amen. Thank you so much, and may the Lord bless you. Karibu. Dennis, would you just want to say welcome to Dennis? Amen, amen. I knew Dennis as a very, very young man before he was even married, back at Sitam Gong. We did a lot of music together. By the way, he's a musician, just so you know. And I know he will also be a blessing to us here at Sitam Boroburu. Amen. Um, just one final thing. I, greetings from uh, Sitam, Namibia. I was in Namibia last weekend. I was ministering there on uh, Saturday evening and on Sunday morning, a beautiful, beautiful congregation there, wonderful people uh, in, in Namibia, and uh, they sent their love and their greeting. Do you receive it? Now, uh, a, a couple of months ago, we, you know, the missions department, the city missions department, distributed or redistributed some of these mission stations. Sitam Namibia is one of our mission stations. They distributed them to the various assemblies here in Nairobi so that we uh, can act or maybe just as an encouragement to some of these um, Sitam stations because we have missionaries there who need support, who need our prayers and uh, also the people there that they're ministering to just for them to know that there are people here in Nairobi praying for them. Now, here in Sitam Buruburu, we were assigned Sitam Namibia. Sitam Namibia. So that is really, for, Sit for Sitam Buruburu, that is our mission station. And of course, the leadership at Sitam Namibia felt it would be good for me to just go and pay them a visit and just uh, spend some time with them. And what a joy it was just to meet the leadership, the pastors there. Of course, it was my first time also in Namibia. And uh, I had a great time. But I still missed you, just so you know. I was very tempted to apply for transfer to Namibia, but then I remembered you. So I decided, no, let me just stay in, uh, in, in Buruburu. It's a beautiful country, by the way. Um, and we will look for other ways that we can be able to just provide support to them, pray for them. One of the things that, uh, even as you pray, just pray for Sitam Namibia. Uh, it's a very small country, uh, but a lot of very, very bureaucratic in everything that they do. One of the things that that church needs, Sitama, maybe they're still in a rented facility. Let's pray that uh, God will grant them a, a place of their own, a place where the church can actually meet, you know. So the idea is to purchase some premises for the church, and they definitely need that. The dynamics in, in Namibia are different from, from here in Kenya. And, you know, it's only sometimes when you travel, you realize just how God has favored this country of ours. See, here in Kenya, you can look for a corner somewhere, buy a tent, and start a church, and it grows. In some of these other countries, you can't do that. You can't, you can't start a church, or you can't, you can't pitch a tent in Namibia to start a church. You know, for them, the dynamics are completely, completely different. For them, what they believe in is having a permanent place and, and a good sanctuary so that they can be able to meet together. So let's pray for them. We will be keeping you informed on, on of some of the ways we can collaborate with them and just provide that uh, support that they will need, and especially in terms of our prayers for them. Amen. Well, to bring to us the word. Oh, by the way, thank you so much. We, I saw many of you this past week when we had our revival week at Sitam, Sitam Valley Road. Was anybody there? Let me see. I, I saw a few of you. Wow. And what a time. Were you blessed? And what a time that was. If you missed it, I don't know where you are. I don't know how come you didn't show up. But I hope that next time 
you will make a point and show up. It was a wonderful, blessed week this past week, just for us to worship together as a sitem fraternity. And this morning, to bring to us the word of the Lord is none other than our deputy senior pastor, Pastor Eli. I know this weekend, since yesterday, there's been a lot of um, anxiety as people are waiting for the announcements of running mate. Uh, I know some of you hardly slept. You know, I can tell, I can tell some of you are looking sleepy, waiting for announcement of running mate. My goodness, Kenyans and their politics. You know, but uh, for now, forget about running mate. And let's prepare to receive the word of the Lord. So to bring to us the word of the Lord is none other than our running mate here, Pastor Eli. What an interesting introduction. Good morning. And praise God. I was so blessed uh, at the revival meetings. Uh, and I hope and pray that we will catch the spirit of revival. That we will not be content with the status quo that God is going to help us to be a revived people. That we will stop playing church. We will get out of nominalism. And that we are going to be set on fire for Jesus. That is my prayer. So let's, let's, let's yearn. Let's desire for that revival to, to come our way. I want to be known as the Balokole. Amen. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go and, and watch there, there on, on YouTube. Well, uh, this uh, particular quarter, we are addressing our theme on radiating his glory through my love. So today I want to talk to us about abandoning to God, abandoning to him. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 8, Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, Psalms 8. Are you there? It is easy, these days people, people swipe. So, have you you've swiped there? All right. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oswald Chambers, Oswald Chambers is, a, is, is an old time preacher. Oswald Chambers says, if human love does not carry a man beyond himself, it is not love. If love is always discreet, always wise, always sensible and calculating, never carried beyond itself, it is not love at all. It may be affection, it may be warmth of feeling, but it has not the true nature of love on it. Abandoned to him. 
The meaning of abandoned is to relinquish and to give everything to him. You know, when, you, when preparing such a sermon, for me, I realize how much I fall short of what I am preaching or I'm about to preach. Because I am just but human and I'm trying to figure out in my own mind, you know, in my own life, am I abandoned to him? Have I relinquished everything that I am to him? Abandoned to God is of more value than even personal holiness. Personal holiness, you know, focuses the eye on our own whiteness, you know, on our own uh, righteousness as it may be, which the Bible says is like filthy rags before him. We are greatly concerned about the way we walk and talk and look, fearful lest we offend him. But perfect love casts out all that when we are abandoned to God. Relinquished to him. Our everything is given to him. Now in this particular Psalm chapter 8 that I've just read, David, this is David speaking, he speaks out of his present experience of reality. Now, perhaps he was uh, out somewhere uh, on a clear night where he can see the stars in the sky and gaze upon the moon and uh, upon the beauty of what God has done. The heavenly light stretching from one horizon to the other. And I'm sure that he was engaged in deep thoughts trying to figure out and I think two things impressed him here number one the glory of God reflected in the starry heavens and number two the astonishing condensation of God to mind to, I mean to be mindful of puny human beings people like us who he has made us almost godlike and he has granted us lordly powers of his other creature, over his other creatures. I mean, he's sitting and wondering. I mean, baffled at the kind of people that we are. But yet God in all his splendor, in all his majesty, he has decided that for people like us, he has given us authority over all these things. And he has no other choice but to abandon himself to this God who has given us all these things. Who has given us glory and honor. And perhaps his mind goes back to where it all began with his journey of abandonment to him. If you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 16, now this is the story of, of David. David was the youngest of Jesse's sons. Jesse had eight sons. A farmer and a sheep breeder. That was Jesse. But Jesse here was not a sheep breeder. This particular Bible, Jesse from the Bible, is, was from the tribe of Judah. He is from the tribe of Kamau. <laughs> David, I'm sure, spent most of his boyhood and his and and and, and uh, his young life tending his father's flock, taking care of the sheep. I mean, that's it, it, it's there. And then, in that particular story in First Samuel chapter 16. Saul had been appointed as king over the children of Israel. But Saul had sinned against God. 
And God rejected Saul as king. And he commands and tells Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. Because I have rejected Saul, go to the house of Jesse because I have chosen one of his sons to come and replace Saul as king. So he goes to Jesse's house. And when he gets to Jesse's house, the sons of Jesse are paraded there. And they begin with the firstborn. And he's tall. And he looks like something like me. <laughs> and someone sees him. And someone says, this must be the one. And God says, no. Then the others are paraded. And God says, no. And God tells him, stop looking at his outward appearance. God is looking at the heart. And you know what? God has chosen you no matter how you look. Because you know people are, are, are obsessed with looks and are obsessed with outward appearances. But for you, God has chosen you whether you are rich, whether you are poor. It doesn't matter whether you are born in the field. God has still chosen you. God is a good God. It doesn't matter your education status. God has still chosen you. But let's continue. Now, Samuel anoints David with oil. And the Bible says from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Something happened to him on that day. When the spirit of God comes upon you, something must happen in your life. Must. Something must happen in your life. There was total transformation. And from that day, David's heart and his life was abandoned to God. He gave himself completely to him. Everything, everything that he was, was given to God. Abandoned to him. And God was pleased with David because of the way he had given himself to him. That he made him a promise in 2 Samuel chapter 7. And says of your throne there shall be no end. And that is why even Jesus comes from that lineage of David. Because he was abandoned to God. Now, we can see David's abandonment to God through three ways that I want us to glean on from today. Number one, through his hands. Number two, through his head. And number three, through his heart. Now, his hands. How was David abandoned to God through his hands? Now, when the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, an evil spirit entered Saul that tormented him. The Bible says that if that evil spirit was, was sent to him from God. Now they came up with a proposal and they said, and they proposed that they get someone who can play some music that suits the king when that evil spirits come to him so that when he plays the music, that spirit disappears. And they proposed David from the house of Jesse. This, this David who had, had already abandoned himself to God. Now David had two things. He had the anointing and he had skill. Because the king said, King Saul himself said, get someone who knows how to play the harp properly. Not just one who plays with it. You know there are people who play with things. You come here and you touch the keyboard, you're not playing it, you're playing with it. There's a difference between playing it and playing with it. The 
not just looking for someone who plays with the instrument, but someone who is anointed and excellent. And that is what God is looking for us in our lives. We are not just looking for the anointing. You can be anointed, we agree. But are you excellent at what you do? When you put your hands to work, do you do your work well? And I think we've talked about this before. How are we excellent in what we do with our hands? Now for me, this, the hands of David were hands that were dedicated to service. Dedicated to service. David was a man who was in love with God and he loved to serve him. And he was willing to lay down his life for the Lord. His hands. It gave him a unique courage because of his love for Jesus. Okay, for the Lord. Because Jesus was not there. For the Lord gave him unique courage. When the children of Israel were trembling, when Goliath came and began to hound them, Goliath and the Philistines, David, because of a man who had abandoned himself, took courage and went to fight Goliath. And he fought him and killed him with one stone. Hands that have been given to service. He was not just concerned about God, but also about the people. He loved God, but he also loved to serve his people. The people were scared, but David, because of the courage that he had, went and fought the giant and defeated him. Because he knew that if God is for him, who can be against him? And also Chambers says, it is never a question of being of use, but of being of value to God himself. When we are abandoned to God, he works through us all the time. And God is at work in your life all the time if you are abandoned to him. He will use your hands for his glory. They will use David. So what are you using your hands for? Is the question. Are we serving God with the talents and the gifts that he has given to us? Some of us are so gifted, but your hands are not being used for the glory of his name. When you are seated back, you, wait, you, you just watch things happening. But you're there, you're gifted. We've been asking for band members. Have you signed up for auditions? We've been looking for ushers. Have you signed up? We're looking for, 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 for uh, what are they called? S security team. We're looking for people out there for traffic ministry. Have you signed up? You are not useless in the kingdom of God. God did not create empty vessels. There is something that God has put in your life that is useful for the kingdom of God. What are you using your hands for? If you are totally abandoned to him, your hands must be used for service in the kingdom of God. And God is calling you and I to use our hands for his service. Our hands should be used to serve our families and not to harass them. These hands are supposed to embrace, not to fight. If you are totally abandoned to God, you will never raise your hand against your wife. Never. We've been talking about and dealing with issues of gender-based violence. And if you're here and you raise your hand against your wife, something is wrong with you. That is the truth. You cannot beat your wife. You cannot. And then you come to church and lift the same hands to God. I don't think it works like that. I don't think so. Do you think it works like that? It does not work like that. 
It cannot work like that. Are you a terrorist at home? You know, have you ever been in a place, in a house that uh, has many cockroaches? You know cockroaches? When you enter, when you switch on the light, what do the cockroaches do? They scamper. Are you that kind of person when you when the kids hear you are coming home? It is like cockroaches in there. People are just running all over, the pretending to be reading. <laughs> Yet they were playing. Are you a terrorist at home? Hands. Hands are meant for hard work, not for laziness. And I've heard these days them boys, men who are just looking for girls who are working to take advantage of them because they don't want to work. So they look for the ladies be very careful. Be careful. There's some men who don't want to use their hands to work. They don't want. Look out for a lazy man. There was a young man and a young woman who became engaged. And they were looking forward to their wedding day. So when the young man was suddenly called into service uh, for his country, uh, military service, so the man went to the field and the man kept writing letters to, to the fiancé, kept writing letters. And of course, she also responded with, with her own letters. Then the letters from the young man stopped. A few weeks passed, and then there came a letter in a strange handwriting, because of course she knew the, 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 the guy's handwriting. And the young woman read, there has been another battle. I have lost both my arms. I asked my comrade to write this for me, and to tell you that I release you from our engagement for now, I will not be able to work and support you. That letter was never answered. That lady took the next train and went to where that young man was. She left the train, ran into the hospital and looked for him. And when she finally saw him, she flung herself down. And with these passionate words, she said, I will never give you up. These hands of mine will work for you. We will live our life of love together. This lady was abandoned to this man. That is the kind of abandonment that I'm talking about. We must be completely abandoned with our hearts to serving God. Serve him like David did. Serve God. Number two. David was abandoned, abandoned his head. He abandoned his head. Now David fought Goliath with his hands and cut off his head. After that battle, the people were coming back home. And of course, it is the women who sing to celebrities. So the women were singing to David, the new celeb in town. And they began to sing. And they created a song there. And Pastor Jagerson is playing the keyboard. <laughs> and they begin to sing. Saul has killed his thousands. But David has killed his tens of thousands. <laughs> I'm sure David was smiling. That thing really act King Saul. But David, that did not get to his head. It did not get to his head. Because David respected that Saul has been appointed as king and anointed by God. It did not get into his head. Remember, David has already been anointed to replace Saul as king. That did not get to his head. He kept
kept a very level, he was very level headed. And it could have easily gone into him. So what did Saul do? Saul began to hunt down this. You know David now had to flee for his life. Because Saul wanted to kill him. So David fled and Saul began to look for him, to hunt him down. And he hunted him and looked for him and looked for him. If you come to 1 Samuel chapter 24, Dave, I mean King Saul goes into a cave where David and his men are hiding. Saul had gone to do his business. So David is told by his men. This is what they said. This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, because they remember what God told David. I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. They quoted God they quoted what God had told David. Let me tell you guys. Be very careful with the people around you. They can tell you stuff that will get into your head. And you might just end up making a big, the biggest blunder of your life. But David did not let that get into his head. In fact, he rebuked them sharply and told them, I cannot do this. Saul is God's anointed servant. I cannot do this. And he rebuked them. It is because David had abandoned his head to the Lord. You know, after some time, Saul went into battle. And Saul died there. So this Amalekite guy comes to tell the King David not King David, to actually comes to tell David that Saul was just about to die. So I decided to finish him. And he thought he would get props. He thought David would elevate him to be commander. But what did David do? David actually asked people to kill that Amalekite. Not just because he was an Amalekite, but because David had abandoned his head to God. He did not let anything get into his head. But now, Saul is gone. I should rejoice and be glad. Because if this were you, and this news came, that Saul is gone, what would you have done? We would have burst out in tongues. <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. He has finally triumphed over my enemies. He has said, I will put, and you start making a dance. And you, huh? and you begin dancing because God has come through. It is time for me. They will see. They better recognize David is in there. But David, David wept for Saul because it had not gotten into his head. Because his head was completely abandoned to God. Now I ask you, are there things that have gotten into your head? Have you abandoned your head to God? And this is something I, I even ask myself. Because we let things get into to our heads. You know, you could be more gifted and more talented and you could be a better communicator than even your boss. And you know it. Has it gotten into your head? Now you begin to undermine him. You begin to show him how he does not know what he is doing. And 
you wonder why you're jobless? Because you are fired? Because it got into your head? You must not let it get into your head. Even if you're more gifted. Are you earning more than your husband? And it has gotten to your head. Now your husband cannot tell you anything because you're the one who makes more money. Now you come home and you expect your husband to be the one to serve you because you make more money. Small wonder, there are so many problems in some marriages because it has gotten to your head. Don't let it get to your head. You know, this generation is so informed. They know so much because everything is, is, is everywhere. The internet and all those things. And we are so informed and we know a lot of stuff. And sometimes we even know more than our parents. The fact that you know more than your parents, don't let it get to your head so that you begin to disrespect them. God forbid. You might be attracting a curse upon yourself for disrespecting your parents because you think that you know more than they do. Abandon your head to the Lord. Abandon it to him. Don't believe everything that your friends tell you. They call them wase wa kuchocha. You know kuchocha? Ame kuchocha. No, may church one. You be the we are the man. You are the, the man. They come like David and begin to quote scriptures. Huh? A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand may fall. Yeah, but they shall not come. You, know, you just begin to quote. And they begin to tell you how you're gifted. How? Don't be. Don't let it get to your head. Because if it gets to your head, you are in trouble. I am telling you, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Abandon your head to him. Like David did. Number three, finally. David abandoned his heart. Abandoned his heart. First Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. This is what Samuel told Saul. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. This is Samuel speaking to Saul after God had rejected him as king. You know, this statement, a man after God's own heart, actually has been subject of many interpreters and many commentators. You know, a different interpretation for a man after God's own heart is likely more appropriate in the context of 1 Samuel than if you read it in the book of Acts. That pertinent phrase from 1 Samuel is actually after his own heart, after God's own heart. Okay? which grammatically could modify the word man because you see they say a man after God's own heart or it could also modify the verb that Yahweh has sought out so many commentators understand 1 Samuel 13 14 with regard to the latter that, that Yahweh has actually chosen this man 
In other words, Yahweh has sought a man in accordance with his own choice. That is, instead of the choice of the people. In other words, Saul was the choice of the people. The people had rejected God and they demanded for a king. And God told them, Sour, go ahead. So, Saul was the choice of the people. But David is different. David was the choice of God. David was God's choice for king. This means the phrase a man after God's own heart does not relate to moral quality of David in and of itself. David was God's choice and given that title, a man after God's heart. But if you peruse the scriptures, you will find that there were more kings who were godlier than David. There were people who were more godlier. If there's a word like more godlier. There are people who are godlier than David because we know the, the kind of person that David was. Hezekiah and Josiah they were godlier than David. Daniel, Elijah, Elisha. But all of them were not given a title a man after God's own heart. They were not really God's choice as it were in, in this particular context. And we all know that David had some serious character issues. And we know what he did. If you read uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 11, how he killed Uriah so that he can have his wife Bathsheba. David had some wicked things that he did. But so, what am I saying? I'm saying that God did not call him because of his character as such. God called him because God chose him. And I'm telling you, God has chosen you. Not because you are so righteous. Not because you are so good. Let me tell you, we are evil. All of us. But God has chosen to call you and I into his fold. Now the difference between Saul and David was like day and night. Okay? Saul, when he had sinned, you remember Saul had been given specific instructions to go and finish off those people that he had been told to finish off. But what did he do? Saul did not finish them off. He took Agag the king and he took the fat, I mean some animals that looked a bit healthy and he pretended that he's going to, to, to give an offering with those uh, animals. So Samuel comes and confronts him and asks him, did you do what God commanded you to do? And Saul arrogantly says, I did. He had not done what God told him to do. Arrogance of the highest order. Even at that point, he was still not willing to confess or to repent what, of, of what he had done. In fact, he started confessing after Samuel had told him the repercussions of what he had done. Is when now he says, oh, I'm sorry, I've sinned against the Lord. But you can see his heart is a heart of arrogance. But look at David. David, when he had sinned with Bathsheba, and Nathan the prophet came to him, what did David do? David was so sorry. The man put sackcloth and ashes upon himself, and he went before God, and he began to confess and to cry out to him, and say, Lord, forgive me. That is the bath of Psalm 51. And he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. That is, this is David, a man whose heart was right. His heart was right. The heart of Saul 
was full of arrogance. No wonder God rejected him as king. And you know what, brethren? Sometimes our hearts are not in the right place when we have done wrong. Sometimes just saying sorry to your spouse from your heart will solve a problem. But you see, human beings, we, we are very defensive. You are confronted with something that is wrong and you begin to defend yourself. Humble yourself and just say, I am sorry. Tell your spouse, I am sorry. If you had an argument with your spouse this morning, before coming to church, let me give you three seconds to tell them, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because you know it was your fault, but you don't want to acknowledge it. Tell them, I'm sorry. If you can't tell them here, after the service, please hold their hands and tell them, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. From my heart, I'm sorry. A heart that is abandoned to God. There must be change in your life. If things are not changing in your life, you have a heart problem. I don't believe. You know, we are who we are. God created us the way we are. And we, we should accept one another the way we are. But because we are human beings and we have been created by, uh, by, by many, I mean, God created us perfectly, but we have many flaws in our, in, in, within us, in our hearts, motives, in our attitudes. And we, I mean, we are, we are evil and we are wicked. But I believe that when the Spirit of God comes upon you, something must change in your heart. That's something must give. You cannot now go around saying, this is who I am. You must accept me the way I am. I am not going to change. If you're not changing, and if God, if the Spirit of God is not changing and transforming your life, you have a heart problem. You cannot be abusing people every other day and you're saying, that's who I am. It is not who you are. You must change. Something must change in your life. Our hearts must be abandoned to him. You see, that is what God loved about David. His, the way he would respond to God. You know, if you respond to God properly, something will change in your life. It must. If things are not changing in your life, something is wrong with your heart. That is why Proverbs says, above all else, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Your heart. The heart is used in scripture as the most comprehensive term for the authentic person. It is a part of our being where we desire, we deliberate, and we decide. It has been described as the place of conscious and decisive spiritual activity. Your heart. It's not this organ that is beating. The comprehensive term for a person as a whole. His feelings, his desires, his passions, thoughts, understanding and will. And the center of a person. The place to which God turns your heart. So if this heart is not abandoned to him and God comes and turns to that place and your heart is not in the right place where you are deliberate, where you make, the, the, you are decisive. Let me tell you, if something is not changing in your life, 
you have a heart problem. And I want to urge us all here today, we give our hearts, we abandon our hearts to him completely. A believer must abandon his or her heart so that God can change and transform you. For those of you who are here and are not born again, your heart has not been changed and transformed. That's why the Bible says you must believe in your mouth. I mean, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Then you shall accept him as Lord and Savior. Brethren, we must be totally abandoned to him. We must abandon our hands, our heads, and our heart to him. That shows that we will be radiating his glory through my love. Abandoned to him. Pastor Jesse. And with those words, every head bowed, every head bowed and every eye closed as we give consideration to God's word to us, a sobering word. And maybe you're here, you have not yet abandoned yourself to him. You're not born again. You have not surrendered your life, your heart to him. I want to give you this opportunity because that is where it, began, it begins. So if you're there with every head bowed, every head bowed and every eye closed, you're saying, Pastor, would you just make a prayer for me? Would you just pray for me? I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want my sins forgiven. Just uh, slip up your hand. Slip up your hand as high as you can and I'll sit and I'll pray with you. You're saying, I want to be born again. I want to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. It's very simple. All you have to do is to acknowledge that you're a sinner and believe that Jesus has provided the sacrifice and the way of forgiveness. Believe that in your heart and acknowledge him to be the Savior and the Lord of your life. Thank you. Is there anybody else you're saying, Pastor, would you pray with me? Just lift up your hand. Is there anybody? And I'm looking around. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is the day of salvation. This is the moment of salvation. I'll ask that one last time before I pray for this one who is here. You're saying, Pastor, pray with me. Pray for me. I want to be saved. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. And I'm looking around, and I hope I'm not missing anybody out. You're saying, I want to be born again. Let me ask this dear one who has responded. Just repeat this prayer. Just close your eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus. Just out loudly. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I confess I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me. I invite you. Come into my life. Make me your child. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your word. Help me from today to obey you and to live for you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am born again. Father, I just want to pray for this dear young lady, Lord, who has stepped out of this congregation to come and identify herself with you at this altar. You who has begun this good work, we pray that you bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. We pray, may you embrace her, may you surround her, may, may she know the forgiveness of sin and the joy of salvation. We commit her to you and commend her to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit and God's people say come on let's give him a round of applause don't go anywhere don't go anywhere we have a counselor right behind you I'm just going to leave you in the hands of our counselor as I invite all of us to rise up on our feet we just want to give a round of applause 
for our pastor for allowing God to use him. Amen, amen, amen. Our hands, what else? Our heads and our hearts. We insist on a complete, complete transformation of our heads, how we use our hands, and our hearts. May the Lord bless you, Pastor. And uh, I pray that even as we leave this service, as we go to our homes and wherever else, that God will help us to be a transformed people so that we can represent him and stop making excuses for our sins stop making excuses for our weaknesses because i know sometimes as human beings it is so easy for us to live the way we want and keep making that excuse oh this is just the way i am no that's not the way you are that's what you have chosen to be God is looking for people who are transformed and people who are willing to be completely transformed in his hands. So Father, I thank you for your people this morning. I pray for us all here at Sitamburu Buru. The Lord, you will help us, dear Father, not just to be hearers of your word, not just to be hearers of your instructions, but the Lord, we will be completely transformed to and your likeness in all that we are and in all that we say and in all that we do. Receive the praise, receive the glory, receive the honor. And now may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he watch over you. May he give you a victorious week. May he answer all your prayers. You are blessed. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Before we finish with the 23rd Psalm, just to remind you, this coming Wednesday we are back. We are back for our Wednesday prayer service, midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. So please take note, we were not here on Wednesday, we were in Valley Road. But this week we are back back all right and uh, we we trust that as many of us will make it this wednesday for that season and that time of prayer amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the hearts of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you have a victorious week
come and be 